question is, what does it feel like to be a woman in the 2019 political climate? <laughs> Sorry, that's a big question. So while there are challenges, I definitely think that women have come a long way in 2019. Um, as you know, this is the most diverse um, Congress we've had, which is very exciting. I don't like the concept of the year, like 2019 being the year of the woman um, with like all of the women who got elected into Congress. Um, I don't like the phrasing of that. I think it's still kind of demeaning. Like I said, every year should be the year of the woman. 2019, 2020 political season, it feels a lot like people asking you your opinion and then proceeding to not use it in any way. It feels like there are like, I feel like some really awesome days and some days that I'm like, guys, seriously, come on. I feel like my whole existence, and yes, this is me saying this as an upper middle class white woman, and I, there are certain privileges in my life that I'm very aware of. I just feel like kind of my whole existence, and I'm sure other women's too, has been politicized, scrutinized, and been up for debate. I feel like it means feeling your gender being politicized probably the most that you've ever experienced. I'm really glad that I'm a woman. I love being a woman. I think for me, being a woman in 2019 means that I have to also step up for not only myself but for others because I think at a time where we there's a lot of issues that are coming up not because they're new but because they've never been given attention before. The Me Too movement has really like like lifted women up and kind of empowered everyone. Um, I had another friend who asked if she could ask me some questions about how I felt about the Me Too movement, um, which I think is a really good example of women's identities, women's bodies um, being politicized in a way that I think looks different than in the past. Like we've had discussions over like reproductive rights, which don't just refer to women's bodies, but um, we've had those sorts of conversations, but I feel like Me Too really brought um, some more like day-to-day -day experiences that women have um, onto like the I guess like a political stage. Say, especially after the election of Trump, I would say I, I personally didn't feel those repercussions as well, but I think it stimulated a lot of like these hashtag Me Too movements and the Women's March, and I think it allowed me to see like what I am and what I'm capable of. It's overall, just a greater sentiment that women can do anything and will do anything that they put their minds to. My senior year of high school, I wanted to take on the role of being student director because that was always a male-dominated role when I was there in high school, so I was like, I want to do that. I think um, it's, it's, for, it's tiring a lot of the times because I think a lot of it, like growing up, like you think like things are just the way they are and then as you get older you're like oh there's reasons why like life is unfair and it's not just in your head. Things that have happened to me that shouldn't have happened. The way that certain people treated me, certain people touched me, disregarded my space, my voice. Um, to this election like a lot of my support and vote for specific candidates kind of relies on the way that they approach these kinds of issues. Um, for example like I'm not planning on voting for a man and that's not for any other reason other than um, the ones who have committed to running have said they want a woman as their vice president. And I think that that's incredibly sexist. And so it's as if we're still stuck on this, hey, you know, women, they're gonna have a tougher time with it. And then we don't actually move forward on deciding how do we fix that? How do we move past that? And especially, how do we educate other people who are just using main media sources and not quite as wonky as the average AU student? My main director didn't think I was able to do that, but um, I brought in the largest um, opening night that we had in four years by 200 people. And that was like a really great empowering thing for me. Um, and so like, it's exhausting in that way, but overcoming those and like, it just makes a challenge, like accomplishments more meaningful. Having a bigger and better role in every single department and job that they are in. I think now's a really good time for us to not only just advocate for ourselves, but for other people. Women's issues, I don't really understand why issues get labeled as women's issues when every issue is a woman's issue. There's also issues like, as a woman that I've never thought of before that I should have been thinking about. Um, issues that involved me that I had to start thinking about in new ways um, that I just wasn't being like inclusive in my own thinking, so I had to have other people explain things to me. The level of conversation that you can have with a group of women is often going to be a lot deeper than what you can have as a woman having a conversation with men. 
a lot of explaining and talking, <laughs> um, which I think is, is pretty ironic because that's like a, a, a stereotypical quality about a woman is that they're too talkative. But I do think in 2019, there is a lot of talking going on. It's great to see women come together and have entirely women-centric uh, conversations. And of course, that includes trans women as well, which adds yet another uh, dimension to be thinking about. So I would know. If you had to describe being a woman in one word, what would you, what word would you use? Ambitious. I'd go with exhausting. I would say strong, because the first thing that comes to mind like, not to be cliche, is my mom. Worth it, which is two words, but still. I would say multidimensional. And I think if I had to put her into one word, I would say strong. Because it's like everything that she's gone through and like everything she had to do, it's like just, she's a very strong person. So that's what I would say. Like the first one that came to mind was hard, but I feel like I can't say that it's hard without also um, acknowledging like how good it feels. My word is um, uncomfortable. Um, I feel like it's yeah an uncomfortable time for women. Um, empowerment. I would use uplifting. Um, everything. Yeah. And other uplifting women kind of stay above that negativity, but still being able to engage um, is really important. The word that I just used, I really think it, it shows like women um, as a whole is empowerment. I think women love to support one another. I think it's a really like girls supporting girls kind of thing. Um. <laughs> I feel like it's a little phrase because I feel like it's so hard, but it's like so good. So that's worth it. You are part of a group and a community filled with such strong um, and powerful human beings and like I don't like to generalize ever really even if it's like a positive generalization because I feel like that can be disempowering in its own way um, but to be a woman feels really powerful um, yeah.